It's the Islamic month of Ramadan, so when the sun goes down, another day of fasting is done. And in Syria, the rebel army comes out to fight. We joined a convoy on a highly dangerous mission to Aleppo, driving around army checkpoints, sneaking along back roads, headlights off to avoid being seen, passing under the nose of government troops, and into Syria's second city, where the insurgency has found its loudest voice. And the battle is at its most fierce. Many here are desperate for the rebels to succeed, clamoring for freedom denied by their president. But as the rebels take over this district, many fear what you're really seeing is an Islamic takeover. That'll unleash a whirlwind of division and bloodshed across this region. Hundreds, perhaps as many as a thousand rebel fighters have now pushed into this part of Aleppo city. As you can see, they've set up burning barricades to try and protect this particular district. There's a police headquarters and an intelligence office up the road, and their fear is that reinforcements will head from downtown Aleppo. By daylight, rebel snipers take to the roofs, copying army tactics. They control a number of districts and are ready to defend them. It was another day of intensive fighting as the fighters try to extend their control and seek revenge against men they accuse of being Shabiha, members of the brutal government militia. There's little justice on either side here. Losing Aleppo would be a potentially fatal blow to President Assad, and today the fight back began. With helicopter gunships firing at rebel positions. But even with a tank they'd captured from the army, the fighters are vastly outgunned. But what happened next marked a dramatic escalation. For the first time, fighter jets took to the skies, arcing through the air, and strafing the ground. A mark of how desperate the government's become. But the last word goes to the victims, to the wounded, and to the dead. Aisha almost looks like she's sleeping, but she was killed today by an artillery shell. Only the victims are blameless here, and however this ends, there will be more of them. Ian Panel, BBC News, in Aleppo City.